I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and Nokia, after months and months and months, have finally released their first two Windows Phone 7 devices. One's a Nokia Lumia 710, and the other one is the Nokia Lumia 800. Now this bad boy isn't coming to the US, but it's gonna be available in a bunch of other countries starting this month and then rolling out again to some other countries in December. Not quite coming to the US, though Nokia says next year is the year for Windows Phone 7 devices in the US. Let's take a look at this though and see if this is the device you should get. Maybe you should even unlock it and bring it over into the States. We'll find out in the full review of the Nokia Lumia 800. But first, gonna give some love to my boys at Best Buy Mobile because they hook us up with a lot of phones for use in our Wampaw Banda game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, they'll help you with regardless of whether it's AT&T or Sprint or Verizon or T-Mobile, they're unbiased. They'll help you not only walk out working, but they'll help you with unbiased advice and more at Best Buy Mobile. Enough of that, let's get into it. Full review, Nokia Lumia 800. Is this the Nokia Windows Phone 7 device? Heck, is this the best Windows Phone 7 device on the market ever in the history of Windows world? We'll find out, starting right now. So similar platform, different hardware. Here's Nokia, one of their two Windows Phone devices. This is Nokia Lumia 800, and this is coming out in select countries this month, and coming out in more countries in December, but not coming to the US until at least early next year. Nokia hasn't said whether they're gonna bring out the Lumia 800 to the US, or they're gonna bring out a 4G equivalent, or they're gonna bring out entirely different models. We don't really know uh, their US plans, but this is coming out in the UK, and five other countries in November, and then another rollout uh, in December. So a nice device, totally different design here for Nokia. Well, not really totally different design. It's the N9 basically with a camera shortcut button, a little bit of a placement change with the flash, and they uh, slapped a couple things around and made the Lumia 800. But an absolutely beautiful display. They're matching excellent hardware with a, uh, with a Windows Phone 7.5 Mango device, and it's uh, exciting to see Nokia's first product as a result of their uh, their partnership, if you will, with Microsoft. So specs-wise, this is packing a 1.4 gigahertz single-core processor. It has an eight megapixel, or excuse me, a, uh, yeah, eight megapixel camera on the back with 720p HD video recording. It does not have a front-facing camera, which is particularly interesting on this device because you know when he took stage, Stephen Elop said, you know, this is really the first Windows phone. This is the first real device on this platform. Well, it doesn't have a front-facing camera, so some people are thinking, well, this really isn't. Uh, all it's cracked up to be, at least in terms of specs, but great on the rest of the front. Uh, 8 megapixel camera, like I said, 720p, Windows Phone 7.5, so it's running Mango, and it's got this beautiful body that's all crafted out of one piece, and then you can see up here your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you've got your micro USB charging port here, you've got your micro SIM card slot here, which I don't want to pull out or else it'll uh, deactivate, I'm on AT&T right now. Now, just in case you're considering bringing this over into the US, it does work on AT&T's 3G bands and on AT&T's HSPA Plus bands. So you can see I'm on HSPA Plus right now. It does back up to 3G as well if you consider HSPA Plus to be 4G. Now it doesn't work on T-Mobile. The maximum it'll go up to with T-Mobile is Edge. So if you are looking for 3G experience and you have T-Mobile, this is not gonna be the device for you. But over here, volume rocker, you've got your power button and your camera shortcut button. Nothing over on this side and then the typical capacitive Windows buttons back uh, home and then search as well. So no real changes at least to the software front. What I will say is this new crop of Windows Phone 7 devices that have that single core 1.4 gigahertz processor, it's faster. You can tell a substantial, at least for me, I can tell a speed boost. Let me get that fingerprint off the screen before it, uh, before it bothers me. There we go. And you can just see to me a substantial speed boost versus the, uh, the one gigahertz processors that were uh, launched in the original crop of Windows devices. Now this thing is unlocked, so it's unbranded. You're not seeing any carrier installed applications. I installed my wireless myself from the, uh, from the marketplace. But you'll just see out of the box you get the typical Windows stuff. I've installed my wireless, BBC Mobile, CNN, a couple of apps just to toy around with it, Facebook. What you do get though out of the box with this, three unique Nokia applications, Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, and Nokia Music, which we'll cover. And then of course you get Xbox Live, Office, you get my email account, Old Man Baker, I've downloaded some Twitter applications, and then We Care, which is a Nokia way uh, of submitting feedback on the, uh, the Lumia 800. So it's a nice device, it feels great in the hand, and it has a 3.7 inch AMOLED display utilizing Nokia's clear black technology. So you can really tell it's an AMOLED display, beautiful colors here, the black is very, very black, and again, you know, 3.7 inches may seem like it's on the small side, and I will say after using devices like the HTC Resound, Motorola Droid Razor, you just look at the size comparison here uh, with the display, it is a noticeable difference. It is much smaller, but you do get used to it over time, and it's still larger than the 3.5 inch display found on the iPhone. So let's just go back through and cover some of the stuff, because it's been a while since we've done a Windows phone review. So let's go in here and take a look at messaging first, because I want to show you 
how the uh, the interface, or it's not really different, but how it's different from Android and from iOS, which is basically what we've reviewed all summer and into the fall. So you can see here, again, 3.7 inch display. If you're coming over for a first time, or for the first time rather, from, uh, let's say, if something with a physical QWERTY keyboard, a BlackBerry Bold, uh, you know, maybe an Android device with a physical QWERTY keyboard, it may be a little bit hard to get used to. That said, I do like the, uh, the auto correction on the Windows keyboard, or on the Microsoft keyboard. I think it's better than uh, a lot of the other alternatives on the market. So we'll say the Quick Brown Fox. Let's see, what did the Quick Brown Fox do today? Quick Brown Fox drove to the restaurant to meet his buddy. Quick Brown Fox drove to the restaurant to meet his buddy. And you can see it in portrait and landscape. But one thing I do like about Windows Phone, they do a great job with the transition effects. You can see, you know, it takes two to three seconds for it to transition, but that little creative transition effect you see kind of throws your eye and makes it seem shorter than it really is. But of course you can use that keyboard in portrait or in landscape mode, and that is the uh, the main keyboard that comes with it. Now, in messaging you get two different options. We'll back up here so you can see what the thread looks like. Here's my AT&T message that I got, and when I respond, we'll go ahead and say, uh, if it'll let me, there we go, hi. And it's gonna come back and say error, but just to give you an idea of what the thread looks like, and then, uh, of course, your signal strength stuff is up here. Now, when I get this message in just a second saying I didn't text a valid number, which I suspect I'll get here in a sec, the text messaging pops up here, and of course, you'll see a one on the live tile beside messages. Now, one thing I like, they've really done a great job with uh, making live tiles more prevalent. You can see I have the BBC News tile, and you can see how everything's kind of flipping and kind of dynamic. I have Charlotte weather going on right now, and it's flipping between the map and what the actual weather is. I have BBC Home, which is updating with news. I have my Twitter accounts here, or my Twitter account with my mentions and with my home, and it flips back and forth and gives me up-to-date information. You can see the pictures are moving as well. So that's pretty nice, and I like having the live tiles. That said, I wish it was a little bit easier to access the live tiles. Instead of having them, uh, and, unless I'm missing something with Mango, unless, you know, you look in the, in the applications, for example, and you can set up live tiles depending on the application. I think there should be one universal place in settings where I can say enable live tiles for everything or enable live tiles for these applications. Just kind of a centralized place where I can do it as opposed to going into each application and customizing it. But hey, personal, small little thing. Let's take a look at people as well And while we're going through the, uh, the interface here. And you can see I have my Twitter account set up right here. So you can see people, you can see what's new, and it's going to automatically update right here with what's going on right now. So I've got some tweets here, and then uh, of course I can go to recent. Rick James is a recent for me, and I can go back to people. So if it's at you with me, it should say my Twitter uh, update right here. I don't know why it's not bringing it up, but if I tweet it right now, it pop up beside me, and then I can go down here to where it says Rick James and use him as an example. Now one thing I really like is when you have a lot of contacts in here and you have these little, uh, these little letters here, I can click on it, and it'll tell me which, you know, for example, if I had Aaron in here, the A would be lit up. If I had Chris in here, the C would be lit up. I had Tori in here, the T would be lit up. Um, Catherine, the K would be lit up, for example. So it's kind of cool because you can come in here and say, okay, well, weird, I don't have any J contacts, I don't have any H contacts. Kind of a cool little thing. And then I can, of course, click on those, and then if they are uh, highlighted, I can migrate straight to that list. But let's take a look at Rick James here. You can see Rick James has uh, come to work for Phone Dog. So we can see here, and he's part of the Old Man Baker profile. You can see call mobile, text center, call mobile, as I should say. Send email, map, work address, view website, company, job title, and the notes. He is the man, in case you were wondering. So I can see my history here as well with Rick James. And uh, go to no recent conversations or calls with his contact. I'm not sure why it lagged just then. This is the first time I've ever seen, ever seen this device lag. So I don't know what's going on right now. But uh, ignore that first one, but if it continues, we'll, we'll definitely take a look at it. But you can see here, call mobile, I can text directly, I can send an email, I can map the work address, so I can click here, for example, and it's gonna bring up Bing Maps, and uh, his address, this is a random address I popped in, and you can see, it's gonna bring up 219 North Tryon Street, and then it's gonna bring up where I'm located as well, and so I can focus in here, why in the world does it say Greenville right here? I don't know why it says that, um, but it brings up some of the local neighborhoods in the area within the, uh, the city loop here, and you can see it's loading up right now, so. That's pretty cool, the ability to map out directly like that while it's searching for me. And then of course, like I said, Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, and then Nokia Music. And there is that message, like I told you, where it said error and valid number, and it, uh, it popped up. So Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, Nokia Music all come with the Lumia 800. And this is something I've criticized uh, Windows Phone for some time for not having a really good map application. Every time I switch from Android, I miss having Google Maps. Well, Nokia Maps seeks to kind of address that issue. And so we can come down here and take a look. For example, we're going to accept the improvement program. 
we're going to uh, get it to focus in in the general vicinity of where we're at. And uh, you can see, there we go. It's going to bring it in, in the uptown area. And we can take a look here and do it real time just to give you an idea of what the map's interface looks like. So really nice to have this. And you have Nokia Drive as well. So if you pull up an address, it'll talk to you. It'll navigate you to your uh, intended address. I don't know why this isn't coming up. Let's see here. It's going to have decent coverage. Let's try that one more time. Bring it up one more time, see if it, if it zooms us in. There we go. That's better. And then you can see Charlotte. And so there I am. And you can see a nice little green dot. And then I can search for stuff. I can see places. So I'll bring up places, for example. And let's see what we can uh, what we can find here. Looking up popular places. And then I'll zoom in and see what we can see here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Places. Looking for popular. Maybe there aren't any popular places right now. Maybe everybody's in their car. It is rush hour after all, so... Okay, here we go. So you can see some food choices. Brickswood Fired Pizza, Charlotte Sting, Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club is fun. Children's Theater of Charlotte, Dunhill Hotel, Buckhead Saloon, etc. Buckhead, uh, etc. So you do have a lot of different options there. And then same thing with Nokia Drive. Same kind of concept here. And we'll back out of that and go to a Nokia Drive so you can take a look at it and see. Same thing, but you can navigate much easier through this one. If you have another address, I can say, okay, here on Tryon Street... And that is not where I'm at, but I don't know why it's... That's close enough, I guess. Um, and so you can see, try on this way, and then whenever I rotate, should, hopefully the arrow will rotate with it. There we go. That's correct. So you can see, there I am, and I'm not going 6 miles per hour, but it says I'm going 6 miles per hour. But I come over here, and I can see navigation options in 2D or in 3D. I can set that destination. I can change my settings. And then from there, it'll tell me how fast I'm going, how far away I am from it. And then, of course, uh, you can see this is kind of cool, because I'm in 3D mode, you can see... Uh, Bank of America Tower, you can see the Hearst Tower, which is pretty cool to see those within the Maps application. So again, totally free on the Lumia 800, and it's nice to have you know, additional uh, applications like that.